Yo, what is good, YouTube? Krishan checking back in with another video. If you haven't done so already, guys, you're watching the channel, you're enjoying the content, hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you never miss an update over here at Go Fitness. Now, the first story of the day, we have some amazing physique updates from Keon Pearson, and these were actually posted up about two days ago. And one of my favorite things about these updates is just the look on Keon's face. As you guys know, a lot of us probably had him top five going into last year's 212 Mr. Olympia, but Keon had issues leading up to the last couple of days of his prep. I believe he said he ended up gaining 20 pounds in like one day because he was unable to use the restroom but Keon looks incredible here guys seems like he's incredibly focused and I am very ready to see him on stage this year now this is a video that Keon posted up today honestly guys this may be the best front double bicep in the IFBB let me know in the comment section below who has a better front double bicep than what we are looking at right now now, Keon looks incredible, guys, and the main thing for Keon, I believe, is just the mindset. I believe leading to those last couple of days, probably cortisol has him pretty stressed out, but Keon is a guy that I always put in the best genetics talk with Phil Heath and Flex Willard. So, I believe Keon is going to be competing in Texas. I'm not sure if it's the Texas Pro. I think it's the Battle of Texas, but we'll be seeing Keon competing in around 14 weeks, I believe, so I will keep you guys updated on him. In the next update of the day, we have a physique update from Samson Dowder. Now, Samson finally has an iPhone, guys. If you didn't know, samson has been on the Android for a while, so we haven't been able to get the best quality footage from his page. But this is Samson's first video on the iPhone. But in all seriousness, guys, I'm very excited to see Samson hop on stage this year. After his showings at the Arnold Classic and the Boston Pro, a lot more people have eyes on him. And I mean, for good reason, guys. And honestly, Samson, when I was looking at this update, it's almost reminiscent of a taller and bigger Brandon Curry, especially this side chest, guys. Look how full the chest is. And all Samson has to do is just come in a little more condition. I mean, Samson is in condition, but it never seems like his glutes are in condition. And I'm pretty sure that's what all of us want to see. But other than that, Samson just has to improve his back a little more, add a little more density. And he can be up there fighting for the title potentially, guys. One of the best structures in our sport next to Quentin Araya, of course. Now, we're actually going to switch over to Classic Physique for a second because I do have a couple of updates there to share with you guys. And this is not much, but this was posted up by Ramon Dino about a day ago. And Ramon actually looks pretty lean here compared to how he just looked a couple days ago at the Arnold Brazil. And once I show you guys the next picture, you guys will understand what I mean. But Ramon is an incredible athlete, and as I've said numerous times, he's probably on track to placing top three at this year's Mr. Olympia. You know, he was runner-up to Terrence Ruffin at the Arnold Classic. And this was at the Arnold Brazil, guys, and these are kind of just some candid photos. And you guys can see here, Ramon looks huge, looks pretty thick here, guys. And in front of a bicep, he looked a little leaner. So maybe Ramon is dieting, and he was just a little bit more depleted that day. Not really taking it too much into account, guys. Just really sharing these updates with you guys. And excited to see all of these guys at the end of the year. In the next update of the day, we have a physique update from Horse MD. Now, this is a seven and a half weeks out from the Expo Pro Super Show. Now, the first thing that came to my mind when I saw this, he looks a little smaller than what we're used to seeing on Instagram. And it's taking nothing away from him at all. But Horse MD in the offseason is just huge, guys. And eventually, he may end up having to move to the open class division. But that's not to say he won't be competitive, guys. I'm not really sure how he's going to stack up against these guys. But as always, I will keep you guys updated. And this is another quarter turn that he posted up today. Looks incredible, guys. Looks incredible. But let me know in the comment section below. Do you guys think that Horse should be competing in the open class? Or should he be competing in the classic physique division? And in the next update of the day, we have a physique update from Mike Summerfield, one of my favorite athletes in the classic physique division. Now, I know this is the most muscular, and he's a classic physique athlete, but this still looks incredible, guys, and I did want to share it with you guys. But we do have a video update as well, quarter turn, front double bicep, and a front lat spread as well. Incredible, guys. Look at this front double bicep. Now, Mike, if you're watching this video, I know you check in periodically on my videos. We want to see a little more quad sweep, you know. I feel like adding a little more quad sweep to this physique will make the illusion of the waist look even smaller than what it is. So without actually having to try to shrink his waist, just becoming a little wider in the shoulders and more specifically in the quads. He would have to be a little bigger in the last to be competitive with a guy like Chris Bumstead. But honestly, I believe if he's able to bring up those quads even a little bit, 
He played seventh at last year as Mr. Olympia, guys. I can see Mike Summerfield in the top five, honestly. Let me know in the comment section what do you guys think about his physique. He's one of my favorites. And in the next update of the day, we have physique updates from Mr. Consistent Justin Rodriguez. So I'm pretty sure we're probably about less than two weeks out from the Indy Pro. And Justin is looking on track as usual, guys. On the left, he looks a little bit depleted. And on the right, he looks a bit fuller. And I'm not sure you guys know, but Justin had a hernia surgery a little earlier in his career. So from what I've heard from Fuad, Abiyad, and Phil Heath, once guys have their surgery, it makes it a little hard for them to control their abs. If any of you guys are wondering why Justin sometimes have a problem with that, I don't think it's bubble good. I just think it's the hernia issues. Now, it's talking about Charles Griffin for a second, who will also be competing at the Indy Pro. This is a great pose for Charles Griffin. And as you guys know, no hate to Justin Rodriguez, but this isn't one of his best poses because his midsection usually doesn't look too well in his pose. And I believe Charles knows that he can beat Justin in his pose. So going into this show, this is a good shot for Charles to pose, you know, because it makes us talk about, you know, could he beat Justin Rodriguez? And looking at this front last spread, I think it's very possible that this may be a shot that Charles Griffin could take Justin Rodriguez in. Now, a couple of you guys in the comment section said you believe if Charles comes in on and peeled, he can beat Justin. Well, I guess we'll be seeing very, very soon. And in the next update of the day, we have a recent guest posing from Brett Wilkin. And a lot of people haven't really talked about Brett since his showing at the Arnold Classic. And I've said numerous times, I believe the hype of Brett Wilkin and James Hollingshead was a lot because of Nick Walker. You guys know they're all on the same podcast. And a lot of people seen Nick and Ian being successful. So I guess we all thought that Brett and James will follow. But I still think Brett has a very bright future. Now, Brett, if you happen to stumble across this video, the only thing I really have to say about this is Brett has to hit poses that fit his physique more. I see Brett hitting a lot of poses and he wants to hit a lot of classic poses, but they don't necessarily look pleasing on his physique. Or maybe you should get with Terrence Ruff and Ruff Diesel. Hit him up, Brett, and get some posing lessons in and learn how to present your physique a little better. Very excited to see Brett in the future, but would like to see him with better posing than this. And in the next update of the day, we have a physique update from Quentin Araya, Quint Beastwood. Quentin has confirmed that he is in prep, but he has yet to confirm which show he's prepping for. I believe he's about 13 or 14 weeks out, so that may put him on track to compete at somewhere around Texas Pro or maybe Vancouver. But anyway, I do know that we will be seeing Quentin Araya on stage this year, and incredible. Honestly, Quint almost looks better and better by the update, guys. I mean, from the front. You can't really knock anything about his physique at all. And I would actually like to see him compare it to Samson Dowdle with his new added muscle. And in the next update of the day, we have a physique update from 212 athlete Lucas Coelho. And as always, I feel like the 212 isn't talked about enough, guys. So I try to put these athletes in a lot of my videos. And Lucas is actually less than three weeks out from the New York Pro where he will be competing in the 212 division. Now, honestly, if you follow Lucas on Instagram, you, he honestly may be like the 212 Mr. Olympia. On Instagram, this guy looks incredible. And granted, he looked pretty good at the Puerto Rico show that he did to qualify for the Mr. Olympia. But as I said, he just came in a little off at the Mr. Olympia. I believe he missed his peak. But this is about 18 days out from the New York Pro, guys. And look at the conditioning. I'm pretty sure he's going to bring it. I'm not sure who else is doing his 212 show, but Lucas may be my early pick to win the New York Pro in the 212 division. If you guys don't follow him or you guys don't know about him, definitely check him out. Incredible athlete. And I believe he's Brazilian as well. And in the last update of the day, we have a physique update from Sadiq Hazovic. If you guys don't know who he is, he was very big on the men's physique scene around the time Jeremy Buendia was competing. He never won an Olympia title, however. Now, Sadiq is supposed to be competing in the New York Pro and the Pittsburgh Pro. Neither one of those are confirmed, and I have no idea if he's going to compete in men's physique or classic physique. But personally, he should compete in men's physique, of course, because the classic physique is just very, very tough nowadays. Guys, it's going to be very hard for a guy like Sadiq to come in and actually be competitive. But just wanted to share this update with you guys because he is pretty conditioned here. And it's pretty rare to see, you know, when guys take a lot of time off of the stage, they usually come back off at their first showing at least. Or maybe they're never able to get the conditioning back that they had earlier. But Sadiq looks incredible, guys. And hopefully he's able to win a show and get to the Mr. Olympia. But as always, I hope you guys did indeed enjoy this video, man. If you haven't done so already, hit that like button. Sub to the channel. It's free. I'm out.